Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to go through a repair on a messed up cylinder head. Now it's a simulated repair, right? I've seen enough of these when the valve breaks and it dances around in the cylinder and chews it up. So how do we go about getting that fixed? Well follow along, I'll show you. So we got to get it all cleaned up and prepped, and then we're going to be using this rock mount Neptune TIG. And then show you some other cool new uh, products we got. So follow along. All right, so first things first, we got to get these uh, steel seats out of it, and then get it cleaned up. There's a little trick for this. Let me show you. So the big thing is you don't want anything peened over the seat that will keep you from getting it out once we're trying to get it out of there. So we're going to use our MIG for a second. I'm going to give it a little anti-spatter spray. The big thing is when you wall it, it gets hot. I think it needs a little bit more weld. When the heat, they just pop out. Then we just used a carbide burr to go in there and take off that outer layer where all those heavy oxides were. That would that definitely helps on the weld later. Now it normally brushes one direction, but there's so many oxides in this. So by taking a lot of the surface off with the burr, it gets under a lot of that as well. All right, so we got it on the hot plate. So these hot little hot plates work great for preheating. So we're already at like 160. It's only been on for a few minutes. So it's heating up pretty quick. We will let it get around 200 in that area. So even though we're not going to wipe down our engine head with the acetone, always get in the habit of wiping down your filler rod. But you're always going to have oxides on filler rod so we're almost we're around 200 right now so we'll get our gear on and then start doing a repair so we're going to start around 150 on the amps and turn the frequency to 60 that way we're really hitting it pretty hard Alright, so I'm bringing up a ton of oxides. I had to raise my balance up a ton to try to draw some of that garbage out. So I'm going to go in here and dremel this area to get rid of some of those oxides that floated up to the surface and keep laying in the wire. Alright, so we're going to use one of these new rock mount hard wheels made for aluminum to grind off a little bit of the surface. I just wanted to get some of the big stuff off. The nice thing about this is it really doesn't load up, it cleans up real well. 
And I wanted to make sure that there was no big pits or anything in there. So I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit, see if I see anything in there. Alright, so I'm putting a last little pass on here. I sanded it off. The main reason why I built it up first and sanded it off was to get to base metal because welding to this cast aluminum, I mean it's pure garbage. You're non-stop pulling out crap. So I'm going to go in and work these edges down here, get them all fused in, build this up a little bit more next. Alright, so we got it all built up. Alright, so that was welding up that cylinder head. Now we simulated the damage and then walked you through getting it cleaned up to preheat and what you had to do to be able to weld this up. Now I'll be the first to tell you, the cast aluminum in this form especially, it welds like garbage. The minute you start welding, you start pulling up all those oxides and you got to get a good base layer down first and then from there you can actually start building it. It's not going to look very pretty on the onset. The big thing is get it, get the material on it, get it fused, work off that top layer where all that garbage floats up to, get that off there, and then you can really start laying some beads down. Now I did show you this new wheel we got from Rock Mount. It's a hard wheel made for grinding aluminum. If you use the standard rock on aluminum, you know how that gets all embedded in, loads up the wheel. Didn't have to use no wax to use it either. And we did use our rock mount TIG. We switched from 332nd rod down to 116th. And we went back to the standard Miller torch, only because we was around 200 amps at times. The torch is still hot. And on my CK Flex Lock, I've got those set up for these edge welding, these Pyrex cups. I love welding with these. And there's just tons of garbage coming off that cast. So we switched that out. I don't feel as bad if I ruin the other cup. I really like these Pyrex cups. Alright, so if you enjoyed that, check out Rock Mount for the Neptune TIG and for that aluminum grinding wheel. I'll leave all those links in the descriptions. CK Worldwide for their, uh, their torches. Once again, I love that flex lock. We just didn't continue to use it because I was going to tear it up. That's some nasty stuff when you're welding an like old cast aluminum. So check out some of the other videos. Love your comments. And anything you want to see, let me know. It's been a 4x4 Fab Shop. Please remember to subscribe to the channel.